Good morning, Cardano Army. It's your boy Boomin coming at you with yet another video, guys. Go ahead and do all the things that the algorithm likes. Let's get right into the show. So we got Dan Gilbardello here. Cardano's pivoting to an era of decentralized community governance. Great to see Coindesk covering the chain hard fork. It's a big deal. Great timing for altcoin season. Finally, Cardano's getting some mainstream attention. Jeez, <laughs> it's almost like they don't want us to win. Uh, the Cardano Network and ADA's token are set to move to the Volterra era in June. As the Chang hard fork propels the blockchain into the final part of its multi-year plan toward becoming a wholly decentralized blockchain system. Yes, we are. Chang hard fork is going to bring a lot of functionality, a constitution. Uh, we got de decentralized reps. Uh, expansion of Catalyst, which has already been going great. So it's just a new era. I'm bringing more functionality and more decentralized independence to the Cardano blockchain. I'm super excited for it. So we're going to move on, guys. We got Charles Hoskinson here, and he's going to talk about the Cardano Foundation partnership in Argentina. Let's take a look. So that, that's what the Cardano Foundation. Tell us about that. How did that come about and what's the mission there? So the ecosystem is pretty big. Um, so the Car Cardano Foundation has been doing some independent work of us in uh, in Argentina. We're, of course, aware of it because we talk to the same people. Um, and my understanding is that's an extension of some of the projects that they've had, like in the country of Georgia, where they've done some really interesting government contracting. What we've been working on um, has been uh, basically building strong relationships in anticipation of the Constitutional Convention in December. Because mm -hmm. I have a very practical problem to solve. Um, we're bringing more than 50 people from 50 different countries to be delegates uh, to the Constitutional Convention. Well, how do visas work? You know, little stuff like that. So there's a lot of ground game logistical things, and it's incredibly important that we have connections at the highest levels of the Argentinian government so that nothing gets in the way of the constitutional delegates. You know, they deserve, if they're going to take time and effort to commit to writing the government of Cardano, to get white glove treatment. So they need to stay at safe places. They need to have good transportation, good food, uh, and also get their visas approved in these things. So there's a very practical, tangible set of engagements that have occurred. We've already sent two delegations to Argentina to begin building up that corpus. Um, I would also like to spend some time with the president. Um, so we'll see if we can get our schedules aligned in July and, and get that uh, to happen. But it would be very nice to sit down and understand more deeply about what his goals are for Argentina because there's actually a very strong Cardano relationship with Argentina. We didn't just start conversations today. Uh, people have been working on Cardano from Argentina since 2016, eight mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, it's one of the very first firms to write code for the Cardano project was Atex, which has now been acquired by Globin. But Alan Verbner and his team started working on that code in 2016. So there's almost a decade long Buenos Aires connection in particular to the Cardano project. And so there's a lot of really cool things, whether it be a Tala Prism or it be work on partner chains or work on Midnight or Cardano Core that I think could be done by Argentinian developers. And so really, if the president wants, you know, I think it would be very easy for us to actually set up a center of excellence to do cryptocurrency development in the country. But, you know, you always extend the courtesy and try to get a deeper understanding of what each administration values. In some cases, they're quite compatible. You know, in other cases, they're not. And so it's really important to just have a dialogue and engage with people and say, okay, well, we bring jobs and uh, obviously we bring a great ecosystem. And would this technology be useful? I happen to believe that Argentina is in a very interesting place in history where this current government has, uh, through a process he likes to call the chainsaw and the blender, uh, the chainsaw cut programs and the blender not increase the spending and let inflation cut them, um, has basically decimated the existing government. And that's step one. Step two is to rebuild. 
So yeah. then there's an open question of when he's rebuilding, uh, what does he rebuild with? And my view is that it would be sensible to rebuild with blockchain-based technologies, mm. blockchain-based supply chain systems and voting systems and transparency systems and accounting systems and maybe even a blockchain-based money system for the uh, for the state. So obviously we need to get a deeper understanding if that is on the horizon and what time horizon does that need to, to look like? And that's not going to be done by a single entity. It'll probably be done by a coalition of actors. And there's a lot of very prominent Cardano projects that are actually in Argentina. For example, people don't, uh, a lot of people don't know TX Pipe is based in Argentina. You know, and that's a major Cardano project, 26 people on that. So there's, there's a local coalition of people. And that's also another thing that the government needs to be educated on. Oftentimes you have Western companies come to South America and they say, hey, we'll do everything and we'll be these guys up north, come on down south. Well, actually any uh, meaningful government contract would probably be serviced by Argentinians if, uh, if it was actually enacted. So that's the conversation to have. So you just meet with people and you know, I'm trying to solve both problems at the same time of getting that constitutional convention to a great state. We already have some great partnerships. We just signed an MOU with the University of Buenos Aires. So the convention will be held at the School of Law. And it's an absolutely stunning place. And uh, it's the perfect place to write a constitution and ratify it. Uh, and uh, it, you know, if you actually take a look at some of the pictures, it's one of the most beautiful law halls around. Uh, and uh, UTN is another university that we're looking at. We'd love to build a relationship there. And there's a lot of local government that we've been working with uh, as well. So that's the practical side of it, the meat and potatoes side. And then there's just talk to the government about what its goals are. And if they coincide, maybe that's something for us to take care of or the foundation to take care of or local partners like TX Pipe to take care of and let them be aware that they actually have a domestic option to blockchain the entire country. Yeah, that, that and as you're saying that, I remember our previous conversations where we talked about countries in Africa adopting blockchain. We obviously you guys are doing some work there too, and that they're starting from the ground floor, not like the United States where it's trying to steer a, a cruise ship and, and all the bureaucracy, all the red tape. But they can move faster and uh, upgrade their infrastructure faster than maybe the United States and some of these first world countries. Um, so that's really great that they can you know, adopt this technology and, and just catch up, so to speak. Yeah. And we're still in Africa. In fact, we're growing by leaps and bounds. We just relaunched the RealFi website. So if you go to realfi.co, you can see that. And that's a microfinance play. Uh, it's made by John O'Connor and the other guys that you, he was our director of African operations. And now he's the CEO of RealFi. And it's one of our portfolio spinouts. And uh, that company employs, I think, almost 50 people, and they're based in Nairobi. And uh, we've already deployed $5 million of capital to lend uh, through channel partners who are, are regulated actors in the microfinance business. So we've learned a lot in that process, and we've been a bit more considered and deliberate about how to approach these types of jurisdictions. And everyone's different. You know, Kenya is radically different place than Nigeria, than Ethiopia. And in some cases, you get great outcomes and um, other cases, not so much. And you don't let those things dissuade you. You have to be a bit relentless and resilient. And every day you wake up and you try to find a different approach. So maybe it doesn't work in one system, fertilizer vouchers, but then maybe you make it work with fast moving consumer goods, or maybe that doesn't work out. So you do remittances, uh, or maybe it's microfinance. That's the key. Because at the end of the day, it's infrastructure. And every time somebody does something, if they're touching a blockchain system, they get a wallet, they get an identity, they get cryptocurrencies. And once they have it, they are their own bank. It's a self-sovereign identity. And ultimately, they're in charge of their economic agency. And that's the mission, is to bank the unbanked. And you don't have to bank the unbanked through way A versus way B, it doesn't matter which road you take, you're heading to one destination, which is getting people economic uh, uh, autonomy. So they have agency and they're in control of their lives. So I think the model that John has come up with, which is tempered with about six years of history there in Africa, uh, is a really good one. And we're real excited to, to see that uh, grow. And it's already starting to take off by leaps and bounds. And we've gotten some great preliminary data you know, interest rates fell from 85% to like 13%. Um, NPL, which is the non-performing loans, fell from 40% to 2%. 
imagine having a 40% default rate and then you go down to 2%, it's 20 times better. So we make more, they pay less, and the overall uh, structure goes from, uh, you know, a big chunk of loans failing almost uh, more than a third uh, all the way down to um, 2%, 98% success. It's just remarkable, all things considered. Now there's a lot more to do. There's a founder effect in that and, uh, you know, a huge amount of work on the credit scoring side and you got to syndicate. So it has to go cross border and then eventually you have to add in some more of the blockchain crypto components and then eventually open it up to the retail side. So that's a multi-year journey that they're going on and they've already spent two years of that multi-year journey you know, getting that into play. Uh, but we built all that technology out for it, like Atala Prism. It's not just an identity system. It can also be used as a credit system as well. Nice. So, and, and we built out the voting software and built out wallet software and some variant of Lace will eventually work its way into that pipeline. And then we'll see where the stablecoin side of Cardano fits. And then, you know, we, that works its way in as well. So uh, we built capabilities over a long period of time. And you know, it works just as well in Argentina as it does in Kenya. So that's another thing you bring to the table. And you say, by the way, we're doing this amazing stuff in Africa. Would this be interesting to you guys as well? And so that's the great part about having that that uh, conversation. And you can bring people together. Mm, yeah, I, I love it. Um, and I, I'm just excited to see what... There you have it. That was Charles Hoskin talking about Argentina, Africa, pretty much... Cardano all over the world, so that's good to hear from him. Let's go ahead and move on, guys. Thank you so much to OneCom, ticker symbol one C O M M. You guys know the drill. Keep Cardano decentralized. Only way we're gonna do so is if we support small stake pool operators. Go ahead, delegate to OneCom now. Zero percent fees until at least the end of December 2024 for all existing and new delegators. Thank you so much for OneCom for being our channel sponsor. Let's go ahead and move on, guys, real quick here. Charles again. Looks like June will be the month that Cardano node will reach 9.0. This means that Cardano's chain fork, chain fork is ready and waiting for 70% of SPOs to install the new node. Then a hard fork can occur, pushing Cardano into the age of Voltaire. This is the most significant milestone in the history of Cardano and for the industry as a whole. Cardano will be a decentralized civilization spanning the entire world with millions of residents. We have the most advanced blockchain governance system, annual budgets, treasury, and the wisdom of an entire community to guide us. It's been nearly 10 years for some of us in this remarkable journey. I can't believe that in a single decade, we've built a nation. I'm proud of all of you. Cardano gives me hope for our industry and the world. Let's spread the next decade. Let's spend the next decade making a big dent in the universe. I wholeheartedly agree. I love you guys. I'm Audi. I'll talk to you soon with VeChain and Cardano updates. Have an amazing day. Goodbye. I'd like to give a shout out to our wonderful Patreon subscribers, Catherine B, all of the LLC, Craig, and Fruz, Dan, Maryland for Crypto, and VET Docky. Keep stacking, staking, and chilling, guys, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye.